Hello, it's my hope that you're doing well. I would like to take this opportunity to welcome you to Miss Fountain channel. In this session, we're going to look at forensic materials and their collection. And we're going to begin this with the, with the definition of a few terms. And on to our first term, identification. Identification is an analytical and classification process by which an entity is placed in a predefined, limited, or even a restricted class. We have evidence identification or uh, crimes in discipline. That's the, the other term that means the same as evidence identification. This is the process of assessing material at a scene for the purpose of determining the value or potential value of that material as evidence of a crime. We have identifiable posterior. These are stereations in the evidence mark that can be identified with reproduced stereations in the test marks. We have Brady material. This can be generally defined as any evidence that may be favorable to the defendant and that shows or tends to show that the defendant is not responsible for the commission of the crime for which they were arrested or mitigate the circumstances under which the crime was committed. This is actually related to exculpatory evidence. We have evidence identifiers. In this case, you might find we have tapes, labels, containers and string tags that are used to, define, to identify the evidence, the person collecting the evidence, the date the evidence was gathered, basic criminal offense information, and a brief description of the pertinent evidence. All these are evidence identifiers. We have collateral material. Articles are not directly associated with a sex offender's crime, but that prove or that provide evidence or information regarding their sexual preferences, interests, or activities. This can be erotic, educational, introspective, or intelligence material. We have questioned sample. Material corrected material collected as or from items of evidence that have known location but an unknown originating source. The location is known but the source is, is unknown. That's what we call a questioned sample. Our next term is exemplar. A specimen of an ident an identified source acquired for the purpose of comparison with an evidence sample. For example, a person's writing, a standard use for comparisons, that is a collected or a requested specimen. Specimen of physical evidence of known origin used for comparison with a similar crime scene evidence. That's what we refer to as exemplar. We have an exhibit. This is a document or other article introduced as evidence during a trial hearing. Item produced during a trial or even a hearing that is connected with the subject matter before the court and that, upon acceptance by the court, is marked for identification and made part of the case. Physical evidence offered to the court for inspection may be accepted as an exhibit. Find that an exhibit may, may be attached to a document such as an, an affidavit. TC. We have comparison samples. This is a generic term that is used to describe physical material evidence discovered at a crime scene. Okay, discovered at crime scenes that may be compared with samples from persons, tools, 
and physical locations. And find that these comparison samples may be from either an unknown that is questioned source or a known unknown source. They may be from a known source or an unknown source. In samples whose source is unknown or questioned are of three basic types. Type one is those that those that are recovered. Okay, those that are recovered crimes in samples whose source is in question. For example, evidence that was left by a victim, by a suspect. Yep. We have questioned evidence. That is the second type. Questioned evidence that may be transferred to an offender during the commission of crime and taken away by him or her. Find that this questioned evidence of this type can be compared with evidence of a known source and can thereby be associated or linked to a person, vehicle, or even tool of crime. The that type is evidence of unknown or questioned source recovered from several crime scenes that may also be used to associate multiple offenses that were committed by the same person and with the same tool or weapon. These are just from evidences from different crime scenes, but they have similar, similar, maybe like tool marks are the same, etc. Samples whose source is known are also of three basic types. The first one is a standard, is standard or reference sample. In this mater a material of a verifiable or documented source, which, when compared with evidence of an unknown source, shows an, an, an association or a linkage between the offender, the crime scene, or even the victim. The second one is a control or blank sample. And this is a material of a known source that is pre presumably was uncontaminated during the commission of the crime. And we also have an, an elimination sample. And this, uh, this one of known source taken from a person who had lawful access to the scene to be used for comparison with evidence of the, of the, of the same type. So if for known source, we have a standard or reference sample. We have a control or black, blank sample, and we also have an, an elimination sample. Another term that we're going to define or explain is test mark. A stereotyped or impressed tool mark produced by the suspect tool, which is used in making a comparison with the evidence mark. That is what we refer to as a test mark. We also have evidentiary, evidentiary standards. These are legal. These are guidelines that are used in examining evidence to determine whether it has been legally correct legally collected and whether it's factual and legally proves or is relevant to the case being had or the case in question we have expert testimony these are statements that are given to the court by witnesses with a special skill or knowledge in some art science, profession, or a technical area. Experts educate the court or jury by assisting them in understanding the evidence or in determining an issue or fact. Experts are initially questioned in court about their education or their experience to ascertain their qualifications to give professional opinions about the, the matter in question. And the final term is expert witness. This is a legal term that is used to describe a witness who by reason of his or her special 
technical training or experience is permitted to express an opinion regarding the issue or a certain aspect of the issue that is involved in in a court action when that his or her purpose is to interpret the technical information in their particular speciality in order to assist to assist the court in administering justice those are the few terms that we we were to explain in this session thank you for watching like